Well, what this report does is that it confirms what we know and what you have said before about uh, the threat, the very serious threat that FDLR is to, to Rwanda. And it also, uh, this time, uh, details the kind of financial support, weapon, uh, weapons, and uh, political cover that the FDLR um, is receiving from the government of, of DRC, along with other illegal armed groups. And this uh, presents an even heightened uh, risk uh, of uh, insecurity to Rwanda. Uh, we, we know that the FDLR, fighting alongside the FRDC, have staged attacks on Rwanda before. Uh, we know that the FRDC has violated uh, our airspace and our territorial integrity. So we, uh, we, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a confirmation that uh, uh, these groups are colluding with the, DRC, uh, with the FRDC under the support of the DRC government. Right, and uh, how about this part that uh, Rwanda is supporting the uh, M23 rebel groups in the Eastern DRC? Our interests have always been to secure our borders and ensure that Rwandan citizens are safe. That is our number one interest. Anything that threatens our security, anything that uh, comes near our borders will be repelled either defensively or preventively. And this is why we said in February that we are deploying heavily along our borders to ensure that there's no spillover from the insecurity that is caused by over 200 or 250 armed groups in the DRC. That uh, uh, situation of insecurity should not affect our citizens. It should not uh, harm uh, the businesses uh, along the border or further in to Rwanda. And we need to safeguard all the gains that we have made uh, in this country that you all know uh, very, well, very well about. So our number one priority is security for our people and security for our borders. Exactly, and to some details of this particular report, uh, it provided some uh, names and uh, uh, ranks of the uh, RDF officers, according to this report, as it was written in it, in operations in uh, Eastern DRC, despite not providing uh, liable information or more about these uh, particular allegations. Uh, what do you have to say about it? Well, it's laughable. Uh, you can go anywhere on the internet and find uh, names of uh, serving officers, uh, retired officers. It's just a random list of names. It, it means nothing. Uh, there's no evidence. Uh, there's no logic to this. So we, uh, th that's something that we're completely ignoring. It makes no sense at all. It even includes, uh, the report includes the name of our, of our Prime Minister, for instance. It's, it's ridiculous. Right. And uh, this report is not different from different other reports uh, that were released, uh, some of which, of course, as I said, accuses Rwanda of uh, close collaboration with uh, M23 and a role in destabilizing Eastern DRC. Uh, what do you think is the motive behind this part of the report that uh, always accuses Rwanda and uh, uh, depicts a responsibility of Rwanda in the uh, conflicts in the DRC? I mean, what is clear, I cannot speak to the motive of the, the group of experts, but I think what is clear and that what everyone sees is that the, the leadership in the DRC has a, abandoned any semblance of a, of a normal government. Uh, there is absence of state in the DRC that causes uh, insecurity. Uh, they have elections coming up and they have chosen to blame Rwanda um, as a scapegoat for all that is not working in the DRC. It's ridiculous. We cannot be responsible for all kinds of internal problems in the DRC. We have our own problems to deal with. Uh, what this report does with its uh, fabrications and its distortions of the reality uh, in the DRC and its, uh, and, and, and its uh, lack of uh, you know, uh, explanation of the root causes of the, of the conflict in the DRC is that it is making the uh, situation even more complicated. It's perpetuating the state of insecurity in the DRC. It's undermining uh, regional efforts by leaders uh, of, of uh, several countries in our region, uh, including um, the leaders that are, are, um, are driving the Nairobi and Luanda processes, which is the best hope for peace and stability in this region. Uh, it does nothing to, to facilitate this, this process. Uh, so it's, it's not useful uh, at all. Uh, the report also um, ignores uh, some very important aspects of uh, what's, what's happening in the DRC. Uh, the UN uh, group of experts 
make no mention at all of the statements by the, by the UN's own special uh, advisor on genocide pre prevention, Ali Swarimu Nderitu, who released two statements uh, in November and in January detailing what is ongoing, uh, the ethnic cleansing that's ongoing in the, in the DRC. It's not just hate speech, it's not just Sorry, it's not just hate speech. It's not just public incitement. There's also targeted killings. Uh, there's rapes going on. Um, the report does not mention this. Exactly. Uh, and and it goes even further. If, what's even worse this time, and what's really quite shocking, is that the group of experts then go on to blame the victims for their own suffering. Uh, this is a well-known tactic of genocide deniers. Uh, this kind of rhetoric is known, um, and it is, uh, it is unacceptable. Right. Uh, to you, is this uh, report or some parts of it a cover-up to the failure of the UN mission in the Democratic Republic of Congo? It's a cover-up for, for many failures, including the failure of, uh, of DRC to govern their own territory. And it, um, it, the, the, it's a cover-up for the behavior of their army, which is well known, for the behavior of the officials, who spend their time blaming Rwanda instead of getting their act together and serving their people and, and you know, participating in, in developing this region. Uh, we're, we're wasting time in, in, uh, you know, uh, in conflict that is unnecessary when we could be working together to develop this region. Part of this uh, particular report by the UN uh, team of experts uh, I can say uh, ignores uh, the, 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 the echoes, the voices of the refugees in Rwanda and uh, elsewhere who have been for decades are calling to return to their homeland but are denied of their rights. Uh, what do you have to say about it as uh, most of these, and uh, I mean many of these refugees are here in Rwanda? Well, there's a reason why they're here and uh, people need to, to ask themselves why. Uh, and the reasons that brought refugees, uh, the Congolese refugees here 25 years ago still exist in the, in, in the DRC. Uh, we have over 80,000 refugees, uh, we've had over 80,000 Congolese refugees in Rwanda uh, for decades now. Uh, since November last year to today, over 7,500 new refugees have come in because uh, of uh, a situation where uh, oh, oh, they're persecuted and it's not safe for them to, to return home. So when a report like this uh, covers up or, try, or sanitizes what is going on and actually blames the victims for, for their own suffering um, is put out, then it's, it's, it's really re regrettable. It doesn't help to resolve this issue and it perpetuates the suffering of thousands of people. So this needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed by the DRC and it needs to be addressed by the international community. And the way forward, the, fo the way forward is to uh, stay on the path of the regional uh, regional agreements that we have. Rwanda is fully committed to the regional ongoing regional processes, uh, in particular the Nairobi and the Luanda processes. Uh, we are doing our part. Everyone should do their part. This is the best chance of peace our region has, and everyone has to stick to the plan. What the DRC government is doing, and they're not being called out for, is uh, the there's lots of efforts on their part to sabotage the, the process. Um, so uh, they need to do their part uh, and stop uh, provoking uh, Rwanda and also to you know, take responsibility for, for the insecurity in their own country and do the right thing. Right, uh, Yolanda Mokros, uh, spokesperson of the government of Rwanda. Thank you very much for your time on Rwanda Television. Thank you for having me.